The number one thing and the most important thing, if you skip this, if you don't do this, nothing else you do with your skincare will matter. Hey everyone, it's Lucy from kbeautyharbor.com. One of the most common things that is constantly brought up in my group, Korean Beauty Fanatics, is what to do about hyperpigmentation, how to fight it, how to prevent it, what works and what doesn't. So I thought I'd put together some of my advice, my favorite ingredients, and share with you. As a reminder, I am not any sort of skincare professional. I'm not a doctor. I'm just somebody really passionate about skincare and somebody who has tried a ton of things. I also myself suffer from hyperpigmentation. I get freckles and I am prone to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation as well, which is something that pimples and zits leave behind. So it's a constant a balancing act for me to try and kind of limit the new uh, exposure and the new hyperpigmentation and then to treat the existing one. The number one thing and the most important thing, if you skip this, if you don't do this, nothing else you do with your skincare will matter. That is sunscreen. I have a whole video that I've done recently about my favorite sunscreens. I have an older video with even more sunscreen reviews. I will just show you one for now because it didn't make it into my recent video because I didn't have it yet, but it's the Japanese can make UV clear gel. You want the 01 version, not the 02, at least in my opinion, the 01 is better. Totally clear, no white cast, but you need to protect yourself. UVA rays, the aging rays, are present all year long on any day, overcast or sunny. They get through the windows unless your windows are specifically treated with a UVA blocker, which most are not. And of course, the UVB, the rays that burn, are also there. Both of those, as far as I understand, can contribute to hyperpigmentation as well as premature aging and, of course, skin cancer. We want to avoid all of that, so just use sunscreen to the best of your ability. As far as the body, try to either use sunscreen or cover up. I enjoy UPF clothing. I get mine usually from Coolie Bar because they make a really good fabric that is... It doesn't feel like swimsuit fabric. It feels like cotton or bamboo blend, and it retains its UPF ratings even through several washes. So I use driving gloves, I use sleeves when I garden, if I'm wearing a t-shirt, use hats, etc., etc. I'll put links for everything in the description box so you can check it out, but just find whatever works for you, whatever you can keep up and use that. The best sunscreen is the one you'll consistently use and have fun doing it. Now let's get into some ingredients. I will show you some example products these are not the end-all, be-all products. You can find a different one. The ones that I use are all Korean or Japanese, but there are other alternatives in the Western world. Whatever is affordable to you and easily acquired, whatever works for you, experiment with that. So my suggestions are just examples. One of the most famous, well-known ingredients for hyperpigmentation is vitamin C. It's an antioxidant. I use mine in the morning because it can actually boost how effective your sunscreen is. Just make sure that the vitamin C is fully soaked in before you do your sunscreen because you usually want to apply sunscreen on a dry face. One of the ones I like, and it's a well-known one, is the Claire's Freshly Juiced Vitamin Drop. When I ordered it, I was a little skeptical because it comes in a clear bottle, but it hasn't oxidized. I, my bottle is nowhere near full, but if I turned upside down, this bottom part, that's the product. And you can see how it's not even remotely yellowed. I keep mine in the fridge. The one thing I don't super love about this serum is it's a little oily in the consistency. I have combination skin, but this doesn't make me greasy or oily. It's just a little strange when you apply it, but it makes my skin glow really nice. So I'm willing to put up with the texture. For the effect. I'll put links in the description box for the reviews of all of these or the reviews that I have published. Then you can take a look at the ingredients and more specific directions. Another one I like is the Goodall Vitamin C or it's a Green Tangerine Vita C Dark Spot Serum. Looks like this. Mine is just a trial size. The full bottle is bigger but it's a gel. Non-sticky. Hasn't oxidized. I'm almost out of it and I do see a brightening effect from this. I have a lot of freckles and right now it's summer, it's sunny. I'm not actually trying necessarily even to reduce them right this moment. I follow, I focus on reducing the number of them 
and their size and stuff in the fall and winter. In the summer, I just try to make sure I don't get new ones. And another iconic product, this one's Japanese, is the Milano CC vitamin C. It comes in a tube and I haven't opened mine yet because I have those other two I showed you opened. And I know that no matter how well formulated vitamin C still starts to kind of age and slowly but surely oxidize once you opened it. So I'm keeping this one nice and sealed until I'm ready to open it. But it's one that people really love. And I've seen reviews online and on YouTube saying that it works really well on the backs of the hands as well, if you have some spots there. The next popular ingredient is niacinamide. It inhibits pigment producing enzymes, but it also has other benefits. It can improve the look of fine lines and wrinkles. It can improve the look of pores. It's a very good ingredient and it's common in a lot of products. So before you run out and buy a separate niacinamide product, check the things you're already using. Chances are some of them already have niacinamide, if not all of them. So you can definitely just use whatever you already have. Be mindful of concentration because niacinamide is shown to be effective at 2%. But you can see things on the market with 5% and 10% and sometimes that can be really irritating. I didn't have a dedicated niacinamide product to show you right now except for this one. This one is from the new brand, it's a Wish Trend family of brands called Element and it's their niacinamide, a skin illuminating solution with niacinamide, grape extract and pomegranate. It's very watery, kind of like a toner. This one has 10% niacinamide, so really high. This would not be something I start with if you've never used niacinamide. I don't have a problem with it. I was really careful introducing it, using it like once a week, then a couple times a week. I've had no problems, so I don't know if it's just formulated differently or if my skin can take it, but definitely I wouldn't go with a 10% to start. Choose something that's 2% or even below and see how you do with that. Next thing to do is to use peels and exfoliating products. They can be peeling gels, which is usually one of the mildest ways to exfoliate. The one I'm currently having is this Mizon. Is it Mizon? I don't know. Mizon? I always say Mizon, but maybe it's Mizon. It's Vital Lemon Sparkling Peeling Gel moisturizing skin glow. To me, it almost doesn't matter what peeling gel you pick as long as you like the formula and what it does. It can kind of remove all that build up dead skin cells and help your other products work better and penetrate better. And of course, as your skin turns over quicker, some of that pigmentation is going to come off and, and your efforts of reducing it will start paying off. So I usually exfoliate about a couple times a week but you can do less or more. Start with less until you know how your skin is tolerating it. Another option would be some kind of overnight peeling solution. I like this DM Cell AHA Glycolic Peeling Lotion, but this is something to definitely be careful with. This is glycolic acid, 15%, so it's pretty strong. The one thing I don't love about it is you have to put it on bare skin and then you don't use anything else, so that's it. When I use it, that's my evening routine, cleanse and then put this on. And that's really boring. I like to slather myself in tons of things. I still use it every once in a while. I made a mistake of using it a little bit too often and I started to have visible flaking and, and peeling on some areas. But if used correctly and wisely, you can definitely get good results with products like this. And of course, if you have the means to see a dermatologist, see a cosmetologist, get a professional peel or laser treatment or whatever, get a prescription, that's always going to be more effective than what we can do at home. But that's not always feasible for people for financial reasons or otherwise. These services are just not accessible everywhere. So I try to put together some of the at home things but of course, just know that that's not a substitute for medical advice. And of course, a professional will give you a better and sometimes faster result as well. The next ingredient that you've probably already heard about, or at least if you're into skincare, you've probably heard about it because it's just so popular lately. It's tranexamic acid. It can help fade discoloration from sun exposure. It fades dark spots. It works really well if paired with vitamin C or and or niacinamide. And by the way, it is a myth that vitamin C and niacinamide cannot be used together. They can be. If you're prone to irritation, it's a good idea to patch test. That goes for any product, not just vitamin C and niacinamide. One thing with tranexamic acid is it can take up to 8 to 12 weeks of daily use to see results. And that's the case with a lot of pigmentation care. It is a long haul game, so you gotta be patient. And a lot of it is about prevention. Preventing something is so much easier than treating it. So just 
buckle down if you are dealing with hyperpigmentation like I am. Like I've had this little spot, I don't know if you can see it a little bit right there, it's darker on my nose. And I'm not wearing any foundation right now, I just have some powder on. But I've had that spot for, I don't know, like two years, if not longer. It is slowly but surely fading. It is almost not noticeable. It used to be super noticeable. Now it's fading and fading and fading. But you have to be patient. I am a new tranexamic acid user. The one thing I found that I really like are these Japanese sheet masks. And the brand is Kose. So they, they're 30 in here. And they're for daily use. You just pull it out like Kleenex. I don't know if they're going to leak all over if I twist them but yeah they're folded it's not the nicest material it's not bad but it's not like the softest most luxurious sheet mask i've used but i don't care because there are 30 of them i got them on yes Style. i think it was about 20 bucks for 30 it's not bad so i just slap them on in the evening after cleansing before i do anything else or you can use them in the morning and then use your vitamin c since they work so well together or supposed to work so well together as far as I understand, tranexamic acid isn't something that's going to make you photosensitive or anything. So I think it's okay to use in the mornings. Definitely do your own research. Like I said, I'm just a skin enthusiast. I'm not I'm not a doctor. But I've used I'm using those and I like them. I think I do see a little bit of lightening and, and stuff. Of course I'm also using vitamin C and sunscreen, so sometimes it's a little bit hard to isolate what's giving you the results, but I do like them and they're not sticky and not greasy. So, so far so good. I think I'm about 10 or 15 masks in now, I'm not sure. I've been, I've had them for a few weeks and I've been using them almost daily. And of course, if you want to avoid post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, try not to pick at your spots. You know, don't pop the zits, don't, don't pick because that is more likely to cause more inflammation, more hyperpigmentation, especially if you're prone to it like I am. Of course, no hyperpigmentation video is complete without mentioning retinoids. Retinoids is a class of ingredients. You can have a retinol, a retinic acid, retinal, retinaldehyde, all these things. The most potent ones, at least in the United States, are going to be available by prescription only from your dermatologist. But there are some over-the-counter ones I focus on the Korean skincare, so I'm using Korean ones. I just finished recently this Dr. Different Vita A cream. It has retinol in it, so it's more potent than retinol, but I still didn't have any problems with irritation or anything. The way retinoids work is they improve or increase your cell turnover. They can also help with wrinkles, pigmentation, the appearance of pores, and even acne is a very well-studied ingredient. It is not safe to use while pregnant, so don't use it while pregnant. Retinols can come in different vehicles, sometimes in serums and creams, etc. I prefer a cream and I use a method I've seen first on Dr. Dre's channel. I don't think she invented it necessarily, but it's the one that I learned about from her. I do my entire skincare routine. I don't do any exfoliating steps on my retinol nights. I finish with moisturizer, I let everything dry completely, and then I use my retinol cream. So I finished this Dr. Different Vita A. This was the, oh, I can't remember the concentration, but I moved on now to the Forte version. The Forte has a higher concentration than this regular one. So this is like the introduction one, and then you move up to Forte once you know your skin can tolerate it. It's best to introduce retinols slowly like one to two times a week and then you can go to three times a week some people build up to every day i don't use them every day because some nights i exfoliate and i don't want to pair an exfoliant with a retinol because i don't want that increased chance of irritation but i'm still seeing results even using it the way that I'm using it. So every other day to every two days. I think it's really important to have realistic goals and expectations when it comes to pigmentation care. It really does take a long time. And there are certain factors that can contribute to that. Some hormonal changes, some people get pigmentation when they hit puberty or during or after pregnancy. And of course, if you think your condition is severe or if it really, really bothers you, do try and see a professional. I think it's worth it if you're able to. But my final thought is, freckles, sunspots, pregnancy-related melasma, post-inflammatory pigmentation, all of those things are super common and completely normal. And don't compare your behind the scenes to someone's highlight reel on social media. You would not believe 
what photo editing can do. And while I always knew that in the back of my mind that yeah, Photoshop is powerful, I didn't truly understand just how powerful it is until I started doing product photography. You would not believe what I can do with a picture of a bottle of skincare. I mean, really, I can make it look like it's sitting on marble in the best light possible, etc., etc. But truly, it's sitting on a piece of vinyl in my living room balanced on top of my toddler's toy blocks. Okay, so what we see online, like I can't even imagine what a professional editor, professional photographer can do with human skin or human face. If me, an amateur, somebody who's an accountant, can do so much to a simple bottle of peeling gel, okay? So just have realistic expectations and try not to compare yourself to others. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this video was useful to you. If you have some good pigmentation, skincare tips and advice, please leave me a comment. I'm always looking to learn about more things and, and more products to try. You can find me on Instagram at kbeautyhobbit on my blog, kbeautyhobby.com, and in my skincare group, Korean Beauty Fanatics. I will see you in my next video. Until then, please remember to always listen to your skin, and of course, be kind to yourself and others. Thank you. Bye.